Hello and welcome to week 141. It's Tuesday, November the 15th at around 1030 in the morning. So let's talk about the market. First off, what you should expect in this video is, and all videos, are a breakdown of five communities. We start in the urban markets, which I've defined as the Etobicoke border, Scarborough border, Danforth, Bloor, down to the lake. Fairly urban, I think it's hard to disagree with that. Um, then we dig into the urban north communities, kind of the higher end communities that are bordering our downtown all the way up through into the 401 from like, you know, the Rosedales or the Deer Parks, the Moore Parks, um, right through until Lawrence Park. And the third community, Leaside, Davisville, Young and Egg, that kind of big area. The fourth community is Birchcliff, where we only look at houses because there aren't too many condos there. And lastly, the Kingston Road Corridor from the east end of Birchcliff right through until Port Union Highland Creek area, which as if you've been following this for any significant amount of time, you know that I'm incredibly excited about that Kingston Road Corridor. So those are the five neighborhoods that we cover. And usually I add a layer of commentary, or not usually, all the time, I add a layer of commentary. Sometimes that's directly related to the numbers that we see. Sometimes that's more economy related and kind of with more of a global eye like I did today. And, um, you know, looking back on the past 141 weeks that I've been uh, looking into these numbers very specifically, I'm not going to lie, at the very beginning of our market in 2021, um, I was incredibly excited by where the market was going. And I had some blinders on, like I didn't really account for um, what was likely coming in terms of inflation, like after all this spending and easing of money and allowing all of this money to flow, I should have been more aware of how that was all going to play out after. But honestly, like overall, a lot of decisions that I made personally and my clients made, all of them are still very smart long-term decisions. So I'm not really talking about any mistakes in that sort of um, realm. But overall, I think when you're looking at real estate, when you're under trying to understand the market, it's really important to understand that there are more than local factors that could affect our real estate market here in Toronto. Um, you know, in early 2021, if I were more globally aware, and maybe some people were, maybe some people weren't, um, they could have seen a lot of the uh, Russia-Ukraine situation coming um, and understanding the implications of that in terms of what it would do to gas prices, oil um, fertilizer, uh, aluminum products, metals, like all sorts of things that come through that part of the world, um, we're inevitably going to get a lot more expensive. Um, and then, of course, looking into Taiwan, where 92% of all the uh, microchips are, are, are manufactured, you know, with the issue with China and the U.S. trying to protect all of that stuff. I mean, there is a, a serious um, uh, shortage of, of these microchips and uh, not really an end to that whole situation right now. So looking at all of the things that are coming into play right now, it's very easy to see why we are where we are, but it's also really easy to see that interest rates are not like the one, you know, savior here. You can't just like continue to increase interest rates like this. And I did think that it rates would be increasing a lot slower um, than they did. And they're certainly going to come down a lot slower than they then they went up. And that's really the most important thing here is that they are going to come down. It's just a matter of when. So if we were to dig into the blog this week, I mean, we could talk about how supply is still very, very low. Um, but, you know, I don't want to really repeat myself by going over those numbers that you can simply see yourselves. If you look at the past two years of supply, we're certainly higher than we were at the beginning of this year where we've never really seen supply that low before. And buyer demand, buyers were hungry at that time. So there were a lot of buyers out trying to eat up all of the stuff that was hitting the market at that time. But there are hungry buyers out there right now. They're just hungry in a different way. Like they're looking for more opportunities in the market. They're still lining up to pay for turnkey properties that they see themselves and their families in long term. Make no mistake, we still have properties with three to 20 offers on them just not as often as we did back in January and February. So, you know, supply is still low across the board and pulled back in every single community that I've been looking at. Um, sales did increase a little bit this week, so it's interesting to see that happen. I think a lot of people are going to try and lock up these properties and get them done before the holiday season actually kicks in. But I do really think that we're going to head into a pretty quiet end to the year, like I've been saying for 
uh, weeks now, perhaps even months now. But what's most important is like what's ahead in 2023. And this is what really frustrates me the most about a lot of real estate professionals out there. And a lot of people who, are, who use this phrase of we don't have a crystal ball and they then, you know, kind of refuse to answer the question of like, how is the market and where it's going? I think it's just a lazy statement to make. And, you know, if you walked into a, a medical professional's office looking for some sort of diagnosis, a prognosis, some sort of treatment plan or whatever, and they said, well, we don't have a crystal ball, so we can't really advise any further, you really wouldn't be too happy with that situation. And you shouldn't be happy with that answer in real estate either. And the main point is, like, we're not asking anybody to come up with what's exactly going to happen over the next five years. But at this point, I think I've grown enough doing this real estate update specifically and being in real estate for 15 years to have developed enough intuition, local knowledge, global knowledge to kind of put all that together. And of course, studying human behavior and understanding like how they act and react to certain things to know what's going to happen in the short term anyway. And that's really all we can talk about. Like we can, we already know that long-term Toronto real estate is a safe bet. And of course there are risks to everything, but buying real estate today, I'm in my forties, I'm going to be better off in my retirement whenever that is than had I not bought any real estate. It's really hard to argue something like that. Like if you look at the statistics, having bought at the peak of every single market over the past 60 years, you would still be ahead today. So that's why we need to shed that like day trader mentality, the bull, the bear, screw the bulls and the bears. Let's be raccoons. Let's be these scrappy little critters that make things happen no matter what the environment. So the long story short there is that if you're hearing somebody say we don't have a crystal ball, I think that's lazy and I think you should maybe give your attention to somebody who's put more effort into understanding what is happening and what could happen in the near to short term future. Um, long term is not really in, the, in, in question here. So right now over the next few months, I really expect there to be a very slow selling season like there has been, but even slower than a typical holiday. 2023 is probably not going to start off very hot either. Just like at the beginning of this year, it didn't start off very hot because there just weren't enough listings for people to buy. Now, there are enough listings for people to buy, some for some people to buy, but I suspect that December 7th will bring another increase in real estate in, in, in rates, and I suspect that they won't announce that that is being halted just yet. So 2023 will also start with another increase. But as we get into 2023, the conversation around rates, I think, is going to heat up. And I think that there is going to be some downward pressure on rates as we head deeper into 2023. So when the rates do start to come down or when the announcement of that happens, even before the rates actually start to come down, once that announcement happens, buyers are going to start to feel a lot better about getting into the market. And remember, a lot of buyers right now, like I know a lot of people think that buyers are just priced out. You might be priced out, but a lot of buyers are not priced out and they're just scared. They're uncertain about the future of Toronto real estate. So they're just sitting on the sidelines. As soon as there's some positive news around interest rates, they're going to come back into the market. And at that time, you're going to find yourself in more competition. Prices are going to start to move a little bit. Not a lot, because at that time, remember, rates will still be high. So it, making sure that people are budgeting accordingly, people are going to be budgeting accordingly and not going all in like they were earlier this year on homes. But that day is also ahead when rates do start to come down and the economy is stimulated again as we get closer to 2024 and beyond. So for those of you that need to make that move up, like we've discussed in a number of previous videos, you are totally in a position to do that right now. Leave a bit of money on the table on the sale and then save a whole bunch of money on that move up property if you find exactly what you're looking for. But most people who are in who own a home should not really be thinking of selling right now unless you're looking to upgrade. Really, it's time to batten down the hatches. It's time to ride out whatever's coming right now, maybe cut out some unnecessary expenses over the coming months and have some cash ready to make some great investments because prices have come down tremendously. And I really would love to see more people take advantage of that versus trying to time the bottom. And honestly, I feel like we're very close to the bottom. And But with the bottom come higher rates. So like you're saving a bit of money on the home, um, you know, but you're paying a little bit more on the interest rate. So I think the majority of that savings in terms of the market bottoming out is already there. 
So I don't personally see much more benefit in waiting for even more of the bottom to fall out of the market. I really feel like there's some good value options out there for people. And we can go over this one-on-one -on -one if you're interested in talking about them. But just to show you the blog real quick this week, we don't have them up on the website yet because we're a little bit early. But you can see here that, um, well, you've got my, our administrator taking some numbers, so you're going to see her moving her mouse around a little bit. But you can see condo and house sales are both up from last week. Um, we had 46 firm sales uh, this week where we only had 32 last week, 82 here where we were in the 60s last week. But what's really important to remember here is that you know, our days on market stats are crazy. Like we're still having homes, houses and condos sell for under one month in general. And prices haven't been moving much. If you're looking at median specifically, that kind of measures the middle of the market. There was a serious adjustment there as we came out of Q1, Q2. But we've been relatively stable and steady there um, for a little while. So I dig into my conversation around um, the crystal ball conversation here a little bit. It's really, really important you're working with somebody who understands kind of more wholly what's going on out there uh, rather than just saying we don't have a crystal ball and kind of being more lazy about it. Um, and looking at the numbers across the board, you see like inventory is relatively stable across the board and declining. Um, and going through more information here, I don't think I have anything else to really talk about here. Um, I dig into some comments. I've got some great links here that help you understand what's really going on in um, overseas right now, especially with in Taiwan, what I don't think a lot of people are talking about right now. So it's really important for you guys to kind of understand what's going. But, you know, I definitely have the position now, obviously, that I'm more aware of what's going on globally, that, you know, saying that these interest rates were uh, sorry, the inflation uh, at these high numbers was transitory back in the day. Um, uh, that's when, you know, I was kind of tunnel visioned and not looking at the bigger picture. Clearly it was not the case, but, you know, I guess de let's define what transitory means, I guess. I mean, I'm not an economist, but, um, over the next two years or so, I suspect that we'll see downward pressure on that stuff. Um, but going on here, there's nothing really else to really talk about. I'd rather just have more of a face to face with everybody this week. So I'm really excited about where the market's headed. Um, I'm excited about some of the opportunities that exist in the marketplace today. I'm excited that Torontonians have proven once again that they're not panic sellers if they're not getting the price that they want. And overall, I'm really happy with, um, with, with a lot of buyers that are taking advantage with, of what's happening out there right now, especially by picking up condo assignments. They're buying houses that are selling at you know, 10, 12, 13, up to 20% off in some scenarios. Um, so overall, I think we're going to head into a pretty dark, you know, uh, close to 2022. It's going to be a pretty low energy start to 2023, but I really see some positive news coming out into 2020, uh, deeper in 2023. And the one thing that I haven't talked about yet, and I talk about quite a bit on the blog is really digging into the unemployment numbers. I think unemployment is going to be a big conversation as you've got huge companies like you got Meta, Amazon. Um, and many other companies that have a big presence in Canada and Toronto specifically, um, cutting serious numbers of employees right now. And this isn't the same situation as like the beginning of um, COVID when people were all in up in arms about the unemployment rate and how it was this and that. But people at that time weren't focusing on who was being unemployed. Then it was more of the um, the renter demographic, the uh, entry level jobs were being lost, servers, you know, coffee shop, people that work in the service industry, restaurants, things like that. These aren't typically people that are in the home buyer or seller demographic. And we've talked about this before. Right now, the jobs that are being lost across the board and all these major tech companies are, you know, big, high paying jobs that are demanding high quality rentals or they're entering the, the market as a home buyer. Um, so that, you know, could affect our market a lot more than people think. So I'm going to be keeping a really close eye on the unemployment numbers going forward um, to give us an indicator of, of how uh, strong I think the real estate market's going to perform in the coming quarters. So really taking it one quarter at a time and making sure that all of aspects of, you know, the, all the things that affect the economy are being looked at before making any um, uh, general statements about the market overall. So again, um, I'm always a buyer, rarely a seller. Um, if you're worried about where the market is headed, 
then, you know, if you're close to your retirement uh, years, then perhaps do consider selling right now and getting that becoming liquid. Um, if you have an appetite for a little bit of risk and you're aging closer to your retirement date, then keep that money in play, knowing that we've got a maybe a three year window before you might um, see some real gains on that. Um, but if you're young, if you're in your like 20s to 40s, there's no reason why you should be selling anything right now unless you see an amazing opportunity where you can flip that money into something else. But if you don't have use for that cash, then you should not be selling right now. Keep it in the property. Keep the property rented. Make sure you're increasing the rent on your tenants every single year. If you're in a rent controlled product, then this 2023, you're allowed to increase 2.5%. Uh, if you're in a non-rent rent controlled product, give me a call so we can give your uh, property a bit of an assessment and give you an idea of what maximum rent looks like. So I know you're going to get a lot of hate for this sort of situation, but I don't, you know, I, I work for my sellers, I work for my landlord clients, and and I work for for our people, our open-minded uh, buyers, and I work for people that understand what real estate can do for you. And if you're going to get upset with me because we've increased the rent on somebody by $1,000 a month when they've been underpaying for three years, I'm sorry, it, uh, it's just the way it is. So as a landlord, if you're in a rent, non-rent controlled product, so your home was first used for residential purposes on November 15th, 2018 or newer, you can increase the rent as much as the market will bear. And sometimes the tenant will pay, sometimes the tenant will leave, and we'll get that new higher paying tenant in there. And sometimes that tenant will go to CBC and get some sort of sob story written out there. I feel for those people, I help a lot of people every single year, um, but at the same time, um, I'm looking out for your investment here and making sure that you are on your way to a healthier, happier retirement. And um, you know, I guess money does not buy happiness, but it certainly buys a lot of things that can contribute to happiness. So um, that's all for this week. Week 141, I would love for you to read, share. Real Estate Raccoons is getting a lot more attention right now, which is awesome. Um, and your subscription to Real Estate Raccoons means the world to me. I'm on this road to 1,000. Hopefully, we can get to 300 soon as one more milestone. Um, appreciate your attention. Springteam.ca is always there for you for all the information you need. And um, you can always reach out to me. I'll put my number or email in the description. And uh, see you next week. Take care, y'all. Let's finish.